calories per slice so I'm going to have that over eight and a half to nine hours and then we've got one kilogram of sugar that's about 4,000 calories so today is 7,600 calories during the ride we don't fuck around so here we have the machine set up for today got a niche signature road bike and it weighs about 7.8 kilos had it measured at the bike shop the other day and a compact crank set here, 5034, with a 170 millimeter crank. And on the back, we've got a 40 cassette here. And you can see that the 40 cassette works with one of these road links. Uh, I've got one bottle cage, just in case I need to put a bottle away. And running two GPS units here. Got an old Garmin Edge, I think it's an 800, and a Brighton 330. Okay guys, so as you know, it's been about five weeks and I have successfully lost weight. It started at 72 kilos. So let's have a look what I am today. Sixty-eight. Always take bib shorts with some holes in them because you need a bit of scrotal ventilation when the going gets tough. Don't go easy on the sunscreen because you can never have too much sunscreen, but you can always have too much sunburn. Remember guys, sunburn is beta. So breakfast today is about 700 calories. I've got uh, polenta here, coconut sugar, soy milk. It's a good combo. Looks better than it, uh, tastes better than it looks. You can say it again, in your mouth is off field. You can say it again. It tastes better than it looks. <laughs> Sunday. I just, I just don't want him to be in any trouble. You know? I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time, and it's time to talk about the fact that I failed. So yeah, you heard me correctly. I didn't take the Everesting World Record, and for good reason. Now you guys know that I am not the kind of guy to make excuses, but. But, there's always a but, this climb, this climb ain't long enough to take the Everesting World Record. I really gave it my best shot. I tried again last Sunday, climbed 4,800 meters at pace, uh, just under five hours of riding. And that was solo unsupported. Um, on this Sunday, I did have support. I had some crew that gave me water and food, and I really appreciated that. That was fucking awesome. Unfortunately... I was the one who created my own demise by drinking coffee again. Yes, I actually did fail and uh, the addiction got the best of me. And I just want you guys to know that this is the reality of life. You have to fail and it has to get so hard sometimes that you just have no other choice than to succeed or just stop, you know, you have to... Um, it's got to get so hard that you want to quit a bad habit for good. Sometimes um, we just need to experience so much pain that um, we just say enough is a fucking enough and then we, we stop that shit. So last Sunday, what I did is I didn't drink coffee for the whole week before that and I actually felt fine. I just rode until I was completely gassed, which was at the five hour mark and then obviously I couldn't hold world record pace anymore and I just decided, okay, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to call it a day because if I carry on like this I'm probably just going to ride for like 11 hours or some shit and I just didn't, I was over it, you know, I didn't want another 6 hours of this not feeling good anymore. So I've got a plan now for this weekend. On Sunday I'm going to do this climb again 
But uh, this time the goal is just to finish an Everest. I, I want to get it in 10 hours. And I think that is a, a reasonable goal. And it's something that can be achieved. And in order to get that, I have to do about 18 or actually less than 18 reps per hour. But I'm also going to be stopping and filling my water bottles every two hours or so and having some Oreo cookies. So, yeah, I am sorry that I created so much hype around this only to disappoint. I really gave it my best shot, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to cut it this time. So my goal for the future, and I'm going to make it a long term goal, is to go to Australia, do Upper Terries, which is the climb that Tobias Lestral did to get his world record. And um, yeah, then it's going to be a level playing field because I work out the watts for this. The difference in wattage that you need for this compared to Upper Terries is a whole 46 watts. Now over 8 to 9 hours, 46 watts is basically impossible. It's the and the, the difference is too great to take a world record when you need so much more wattage to ride the same pace. So, yeah, <laughs> I just um, took the best climb that I had in my area and uh, gave it my best shot and I wasn't able to do it. And that's fine, you know. Sometimes in life you fail, but you just, the most important thing is to just not fucking quit, just not lie down and give up for good. As long as you keep trying, eventually you will succeed. If you can see your strategy isn't working, then you change your strategy, try something new, and then you give it another shot. And you keep changing your strategy until you find something that works, and then you stick with that. So you can see that I was looking pretty good on the bike, but unfortunately the coffee caused my iliac artery to really start flaring up after about three hours or so, and I was also hyperventilating. The temperature wasn't even that hot. It was like 20 degrees Celsius this day. And you can see the climbing form is pretty good. Cadence is nice, about 90 RPM. And uh, you can see I'm just keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping the body relaxed, and just keeping a good form going over the top. I actually have quite a funny story uh, this Sunday that's passed now that I went for this attempt. <laughs> I left my bag with the water and the bread and the sugar on the side of the road being the plants. I actually hit it away quite well. And as you know, the Everest thing is already hard enough. You don't want uh, external factors to make it harder than it needs to be. But this is kind of what happened. There was a guy who was picking up a litter and uh, he saw my bag and he thought, okay, the bag, it's definitely litter, you know, it, it doesn't belong to anyone. So I'm just going to take it. So he took my bag. <laughs> And while I was coming up, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy took my bag. So I stopped this guy and I'm just like, come on, man. You can't take my fucking bag. I'm fucking doing a time troll here, bro. Like you can see there's stuff in there. There's water, there's sugar. And you can see I'm riding up and down here. So why are you taking my bag? And then he apologized and it was all good after that. But uh, if I didn't see him, then my bag would have been gone and I would have to stop a lot earlier. So... Yeah, in the moment it wasn't fun, but in hindsight, you can always have a good laugh, you know. And finally, I just want to say thanks to all the critics and the skeptics on Bike Hub for telling me that I couldn't do it and that I was being arrogant for saying that you can do an Everest easily in 12 hours or that I can do it at least easily in 12 hours. And I know that they'd come across as arrogant and they took it as an insult to anyone who's ever competed in Everest. And I admit that was an arrogant statement to make, but it came more from a place of confidence rather than arrogance. And they are still giving me shit for it. And I didn't, I didn't do the Everest in World Record, so I got the vegan egg on my face there. And that's fine, you know, I can take it. So the only thing I can do now is to complete this Everest in 10 hours on Sunday and then go for the World Record again sometime in the future. And finally, the stats for last Sunday's ride was uh, for 4 hours and 50 minutes, average power was 262 watts, which burned just over 4,500 calories, and the normalized power, which was actually pretty much the same as the non-zero average power, so that's the average power that you have for all the time that you pedal in the ride, that was 295 watts. So I'm pretty pleased with that, and I don't think I've ever even done that in racing, so... It's definitely pushing myself to the next level.